What's up, everybody? This is Maggie Reichhard, pronouns she, her, and you are listening to Nursing Uncharted, the podcast that delves into all different types of nursing, goes into their specialties, and talks about uncharted conversations in the process about nursing. How's everybody doing today? This episode actually is a little different, and it's going to be a quicker episode. It's just me, and um, it's going to be a little different than our normal gig. I wanted to just come on here and kind of reintroduce myself um, to our new listeners and just give some life updates as well for our old listeners and talk about some exciting things ahead for the podcast. So we're kind of doing like a past, present, future um, of Nursing Uncharted in this episode. So my past, I'm Maggie. I've been a nurse for nine years and I started nursing on a as a new grad on a floor that I did my capstone on. It was a neurosurgery unit, uh, med surge. I was there for two and a half years. And then I started travel nursing. I did travel nursing for four years, 13 assignments total all over the U.S. And my boyfriend, who is now my husband, it's so funny to say boyfriend um, now that he's my husband, but... Um, he was in getting his master's, and so uh, we kind of worked it out. The way we did long distance is that I would take an assignment kind of locally, and then I would go somewhere, you know, for 13 weeks, and then I would go somewhere fun for 13 weeks, and then come back and go out and come back. And then he finished his master's, and then we kind of did all of the places that I went, we kind of did them over again. So we did. A lot, a couple in Virginia, a couple in D.C. We did New York City, um, which was amazing. We did Denver a couple times. We did we did Florida in COVID, um, and then we did that route again. And then I did kind of some some odd jobs that took me out of the hospital. So I did some home health like Care dot com. I did summer camp nursing, um, and so it really enriched my career and. Um, You know, I loved traveling so much and we decided to, after four years, we decided to settle down. We, we wanted to make roots somewhere. And I also wanted to try ICU nursing because I had been an acute care nurse for seven years. So, um, I took a permanent job and I've been at this job for a couple of years now. And, you know, that's pretty much my nursing career. Um, that's been my past. So my present is that I am a mom now, uh, which has been a wild experience. My baby Valerie was born last November, and it's, it's so many changes. It's so many ups and downs, and it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain to people that ha- haven't had kids yet. And I, I saw somebody on TikTok explain the way that she you know, talks about how she's feeling around being a new mom because you experience so many emotions all at the same time. And she was saying she uses a lot of ands in her, you know, when she's explaining instead of buts, like I love my baby and I miss the way I used to be so efficient. You know, people, people don't have kids like, you know, keep that in mind as I'm talking because like, I'm fine. I love my baby. And also being a mom is really hard. You know, there's so many changes. Your heart grows two, three times and your brain actually changes to be more sensitive to things. I was in the airport the other day and I heard a baby cry. And normally I think before I had Valerie, I would have been like annoyed, (laughs) but instead I just wanted to like go over and hold that baby, (laughs) you know? It's wild how your brain changes. And uh, I was, I so I was in the airport because I was leaving her for a night um, to go to a bachelorette party. Shout out to Sid, I love you, girl. But I have not ugly cried like that. I don't remember the last time I've cried so hard leaving because I was leaving her, and because I just can't imagine being away from her now. It's like hardwired into my brain that my baby and I are inseparable. But I thought it was really important to kind of break that mentality that I can't leave her. I think that it's really important for your mental health to like go out and do things for you because you lose yourself. There's so much mom guilt attached to it. It's really hard to chisel at that time 
for yourself, but actually it is very important to do. I've been thinking about how nursing has kind of teed me up to be a mom and because I think it truly has prepared me in some ways. It prepares us better than people that aren't nurses. I remember years ago, I was tucking a patient into bed um, in the middle of the night one night, and she said to me, like, you will you will make a great mom someday. And at the time, it was kind of, you know, this sweet, sentimental thing that somebody said to me. But I didn't really know what she meant or, you know, why. Maybe she thought I was a good caregiver or she just could tell that I, you know, cared about her. But now I'm starting to understand what she meant and maybe even more so than what she had thought, you know, but I I think because nurses definitely have a leg up when it comes to like the trenches of having a newborn. And I wanted to share some of those things with you. So the first reason that I thought of, we have patience for people in need And I think that definitely translates to having a baby. I call Valerie my little koala uh, because she's just an extension of my arm at this point. I'm always carrying her. She never wants to be put down. And, you know, when I do put her down to do something, it isn't long before she's upset and she wants to be picked up again. And, you know, you have all of these responsibilities. You have to do the dishes and laundry and, you know, you still have to like have that patience for her that like, and yourself, not everything is going to get done in the time that you want it to get done. Or like if I'm putting her down for a nap and I'm like, you know, I have just a small amount of time to like do all these other tasks and she's not going down for a nap. Like just the fact that I have a, a more patience, I feel like I'm skilled in having patience I think it's served me well. And I like at work, sometimes I pat myself on the back for feeling like I had extra patience for that person. Um, and so I think that that's definitely sometimes I feel like now I'm patting myself on the back for having that same, same, um, you know, amount of patience. So definitely patience. The second one, poop. We can deal with poop. My husband cannot, cannot deal he had to condition himself and to be okay with poop and he still has trouble. I mean, it's only been three months, but, but still, and he's so much better than he used to be, but like still dry heaving about, about poop. And like, I'm, I can't help but laugh at this situation. I'm terrible. Like I have so many videos on my phone of him, like changing poopy diapers and just dry heaving. (laughs) But I like, I could literally care less about poop. I owe that to nursing a hundred percent. So patience, poop, the exhaustion, um, there's definitely exhaustion and night shifters have a leg up on this more so. And I feel like I'm not shocked at the exhaustion. Like I'm definitely tired. I'm not saying that I'm, I don't feel the exhaustion, but like, I think I'm able to manage it because I'm a night shift nurse and like, you know, when I'm working nights, I'll come home and i sleep probably I'm in bed by like nine ten and then I wake up around two or three so that's like five ish hours or so and like with her I'm waking up two three four times a night and then going back to bed but like I probably end up getting about five six hours and so like and that's just kind of our new normal And so I feel like it's not emotionally breaking me that I'm not getting sleep or else I think it probably would if I wasn't already used to it. So definitely exhaustion, getting used to that. And we're just used to chaos. There's another poop story. So I was taking a bath with Val, which I know is like playing with fire, taking a bath with a baby because she could poop at any time. But like new moms, I have to say, I love taking baths with her. Like I've done it twice and she loves it because she gets to float. Like normally, you know, I, she has to sit in this like little bathtub thing. But like when I'm in the bath with her, I hold her head and her butt and she just like gets to float around. She's got more freedom and she just freaking loves it. She goes nuts. And it's just like warm and cozy and, you know, cuddling with your newborn. and It's just wonderful. But you are playing with fire uh, because they could poop in the water at any moment. So my husband was in 
the bathroom with us. I told you already, he's not not good with poop. So what do you think happens? She poops in the water and he is like beside himself. He's like dry heaving and I'm holding her up like, you got to take her. And he's like dizzy. Like I'm just laughing so hard at the whole situation. And like I'm grossed out too, but I'm already in the bath. So I'll just like, you know, stood up and showered once he took her. But, like, chaos. for, And the dog was in there, too, because, like, Enzo loves to be, like, it's, like, a whole family thing. <laughs> so, but, like, we, I was fine. You know, just the whole thing, chaos. But, like, we're used to chaos in the hospital. <laughs> so those are how I think that nursing has really teed me up to be, to be a mom. But, anyway, I mean, being a mom is really... It's wonderful, but the expectations on yourself are insane. I mean, and it's expectations that you put on yourself. You know, you want to soak up all this time with your newborn baby, but also you feel like you're being told from society to like still keep up with your pre-mom life. And and the baby doesn't care about that stuff. She just wants to be held. My little koala just wants to be held, you know, but I have to like do the dishes and laundry and clean and take Enzo out, you know, taking our 80 pound golden retriever out while having her in a carrier is like a comedy sketch. Like I, there's no way to do it. And even things like texting, just, you know, I feel (laughs) texting with her. I feel like she knows when I'm talking to somebody, but not to her. And she gets upset. Like she know she wants me to pay attention to her. And so you know, communicating with people is hard. Keeping up with people is hard. You know, you just have less less time. So you have all of these tasks like dishes and laundry and vacuuming that you used to do, that you're trying to do, still do those. And then you're also like making time for new stuff like breastfeeding, which can take like five to 30 minutes and pumping and then pumping and feeding, feeding and washing all of the bottles if you're doing that. And then there's another poll that like you want to do other stuff that make you feel like a human, like trying to get some fresh air with them or running errands with them, making good food for yourself instead of just like grabbing the easiest thing in the fridge or trying to keep up with friends and being there for friends and family because like life doesn't stop. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm not even back to work yet. I mean, I go back to work full time in April. And so I'm sure once I go back to work, I'm going to have more to say, you know, trying to add that into the mix and once and what it looks like. It's a lot. And this isn't to say that I don't love every moment with her. I mean, I'm soaking up the time that she's this little and can be my little koala. Like, you know, but it's again, it's just it's a lot of ands. It's, you know, like with the bachelorette party, I went on the bachelorette party and like, I was so grateful and happy to have a night to feel like the old me again. And I ugly cried leaving her, you know. So I just, anybody that's listening out there that like doesn't have kids yet, it is a lot. But it's it's also so rewarding. And I I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it or her or, you know, for any of it. It's just a massive change, massive life change. So that's my mom life in a nutshell, a lot about me. We did past and present and now for the future. So what is going on with the podcast? So there's two ways that we are focused on the future in the next little while. The first way we are actually going to start having themes for the seasons. So this next season is going to focus all about the future of nursing. We're going to have a couple of professors on a nurse educator, maybe a nursing student. We're going to talk about setting ourselves up for success for the future by having financial literacy. Uh, So I'm super excited to delve into this where we see nursing going and how to steer that in a positive direction over the next couple of months. And then my hope is to kind of um, pendulum swing to um, getting like hard, heavy hitting some of the inpatient positions as well. So be on the lookout for those. So excited to start themes. Um, and now for the future of the podcast in itself. 
So we are sponsored by AMN Healthcare. It's a travel agency that I was with for a lot of my contracts as a traveler. Um, And we are deepening our connection with AMN. And we have a common goal of launching the podcast to new heights this year. Our team is growing. We went from a team of like four to a team of like 11. And we are going to merge our social media efforts with AMNs. So you can find all of our content now at AMN Nurse on Instagram. We're moving all of our content over there. And so all of our listeners can see our content, but also are exposed to all of this other content that the AMN puts out. They put out FAQs. Um, about being travelers. There's a ton of travel nurse information on the Instagram page. Um, So I think that it's going to be great for the podcast. And so we're really excited about what that integration means. I feel like we're going to grow a ton. I was talking to um, one of our um, producers, Katie, the other day, and she was saying like, I feel like I've watched you through so many milestones during this podcast. And she's so right. Like in the two years that we've been doing this, like I've gotten married or we did part two of our wedding. I bought a house. I became a mom. You know, I feel really lucky to have this platform where I can just kind of document my life in that way. You know, this podcast means a lot to me. And if you listen to our very first episode, which is pinned um, to the top of our YouTube channel, you'll understand that I... I really value the ability to try new things within nursing. I think that travel nursing kept me at the bedside for sure. I was burned out and I had only been a nurse for a couple of years. Um, And travel nursing taught me that I'm not just doing this to keep our quality indicators high. Because I think I got lost in the tasks. I think a lot of us do. I felt like I was just a taskmaster you know, and when those, I wasn't getting those tasks done, then I wasn't a good nurse and I wasn't doing a good job, which in no way is true, you know, but in, when you have that mentality, there's no room for the humanity in nursing, which is ultimately why we all come to the profession, right? I mean, so then you take that away because there's all these other tasks that you have to do. And then there's no reward there. There was nothing left in it for me. Because it felt like you either get those tasks done or you don't. And we didn't come into the profession to complete tasks. But that's the only thing that felt like it was getting reinforced. If you don't get those tasks, then then you get reprimanded. And I think traveling exposed me to a lot of different work environments. And I learned how to cope with stress by watching other nurses, new batches of nurses every 13 weeks, cope with stress every few months all the while doing different assignments in different areas of med surge. So I was always learning new things. Um, And at the end of the four years, I felt like I could handle anything. I felt like I was a super seasoned nurse, um, even though I only was, you know, for like six, seven years. Travel nursing was definitely the answer for me. But I don't think that it is the answer for everyone. However, I think change is the answer for everyone. And that looks different to different people. You can stay where you're at, but change the way you cope, which last year we actually had some pretty amazing episodes about the way we cope and building resiliency. So make sure to look at those if you haven't. Um, But I think either changing where we're at, changing our mentality or the way we cope um, helps us all stay in nursing. You know, nursing is really hurting right now. I think that we have more burned out nurses than energized nurses. There's a lot of expectations on us that take an immense toll. And we're trying to raise new nurses and, you know, we're pouring from empty cups into their cups. So this podcast, the meaning of this podcast and what it does for other nurses, it's so important. And I'm so proud to have created this with AMN. I'm proud of the content. I'm proud of how we've grown. And I think our growth is a testament to how valuable our content is in this era of nursing that we're in. So that is what I foresee the future of this podcast to be. Make sure to follow us on AMN Nurse. That's where all of our content is going to be. 
and I look forward to hearing from you guys and seeing what the future holds for us. All right, guys, take care of yourself. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.